A High-Pitched Cry for Help by Problematic Underslash Lana on AO3. Chapter 26. A Useful Hobby. The mission was on. It was in no way a dangerous mission of sorts. So Aizawa wasn't really worried for that matter. What had him worried was what finding Izuku's biological father could entail. For the first time in his life, he hoped to find something really illegal. If those containers were to have something really bad on them, he could easily gain Izuku's full custody without having to put him on the stand. He was sure that piece of shit he had as a father would not want to fight for custody. But on the rare occasion that he did, there was barely any evidence that would be irrefutable in court. It was confirmed that Izuku was heavily bullied in school, so they would use that to justify his injuries. Even the huge scar on his back that he was sure was made by his father's fire-breathing quirk. It could be said to be made by Bakugo's explosion quirk. About the abandonment, he could say it was just the two first weeks when Izuku missed school, since apparently the little one continued going even when he was completely alone. Even during those two weeks, he could argue that he thought he was with his mother, and since she couldn't argue back... It would be a lot harder to make Izuku testify, which would only help his case since he could barely even talk to them. If it came down to it, Aizawa and Yamada both knew it would be a long battle that would only help to deteriorate their little one's mental health. The kid had received blows after blows his whole life, and they didn't want to see what would break the camel's back. So, there he was in front of the container that was hopefully full of guns, or something of the sort. But life tended to be disappointing. Izuku's life, especially. The container was almost empty. It only had some plastic bags and some cardboard boxes that obviously used to contain something. The police had nothing to do but to take samples of everything and to close the place down. Namoyasa had other plans, though. Since he was in charge of the whole operation, he decided to keep everything as they found it. He alerted those in charge of maintaining the control of the containers that there would be an agent with them at all times. And, with a simple picture of Asashi Midoriya, they waited until there was any new movement. The next move, though, was at the Yamada Hazawa home. The officer that was undercover next door received a threat too. Their mother's old wedding ring laid on the front door, just like the nail once was. They had clearly been in her home, even if she didn't notice. They had been caught. The couple then decided to move to a separate location. They moved into a smaller apartment next to the Air Force. It was really far and loud because of the planes, but it was also close to where the containers were kept. Izuku was now iterable most of the days. The poor kid can barely handle all the noise and all the people that were there for security. He missed his playdates with Tensei and wanted to see the family cats that stayed now with Nomura. Yamada was worried that this could be a step back in his progress with verbal communication. But when no other officers were around, he still talked to them. Most of the time, he just asked when they could go home. Izuku was really smart. He knew that this was far more important than just another case. Otherwise, he would not be brought along to everywhere they went. But he also knew better than to ask questions around that would possibly get him no answers. So, he sat still and did what he did best. Hero Analyze. For the past few weeks, he had dedicated his everyday life to analyzing his current favorite hero, Eraserhead. At the beginning of the week, he had just asked Mike for any videos of him fighting, and although there were not many, the blonde was happy to comply, as he didn't usually ask for anything. In a matter of days, the pair made it their routine to make time in Mike's schedule to watch hero videos and hear the little one rambling quietly. It was a new part of him that he was happy to see. It appeared the kid could just ramble strings of information that should be far from his reach at such a young age, and it was fascinating to see. He was comfortable enough to do it around both of them and no one else, even if he didn't realize he did it. 
Yamana had to admit that the level of genius the kid had was overwhelming, because it was hard for even someone his age to stay on track of what his analysis were and what he said too. But Izuku was patient, and loved heroes as much as he loved his dada. You should have seen it, show. There are at least ten pages about your fighting style alone, he said excitedly, since Izuku only ever made his analysis with Hisashi. Well, it sounds really cool, but if he doesn't want to show me, I can't force him to. Don't you have some pages, too? He established, getting ready to go to the station again, even though he had just come to the temporary apartment. The loud one shrugged, some sadness in his eyes at seeing him go so soon. He knew they were closer than ever, but that didn't help the feeling of loneliness when he was left behind for being a bit more of a public figure. I do, but he is still uncomfortable talking about his quirk, and they're similar to some degree, so... He sighed, dramatically. He can't wait to practice with Nezu again. He is going to make him evil, I know it. He can try, but I actually think he has a soft spot for Izuku. Refuted the blonde, thinking about how he actually let the kid pet him, even after they told him to not do so. He didn't seem to like it, though. Izuku heard them talking. Not that they were whispering, but he should have been asleep. It was actually a hobby of his. Eavesdropping when he thought they couldn't see him. He just loved the way they talked to one another. So gentle, so loving, and mimicking the other. Mike lowered his voice a lot, and Aizawa would make sure to be on his line of sight to talk if he wasn't wearing his hearing aids even signing as he talked out loud. Izuku remembered that his parents, bio parents, never looked at each other like that, not even before he was diagnosed. It was a funny feeling, really. He didn't fully understand, but it made him bubbly and warm inside. It was even better when they talked to him in a similar fashion. Izuku wondered if Kachan's parents talked to him like that sometimes. He made his final decision to uncover his facade to give his latest analysis notebook to his papa, who accepted it as if it was pure gold, and told him to actually go to sleep. He would come back in the morning, and they could review the analysis together. Izuku couldn't wait to hear what he thought about his suggestions. Funny enough, Izuku would soon discover how good his suggestions were. Okay, there was nothing in the container. Okay, um... I'm... Hold up, I'm a little... Okay, so if it's not the... Con all right, well, first of all, um, clearly it wasn't the container. But I do think that things are still going to escalate. Maybe not because of the container. I thought it was going to be the container, but okay. That's not the catalyst. What is? What does catalyst even mean? I use some big words sometimes and have a small understanding on what they mean and where to use them. But I don't know what they mean. Catalyst is one of them. I don't know what it actually means, but I have a sort of understanding of where to put it in conversation because of what's it called, um, what other people put it and stuff. I hope I'm using that word properly. Hopefully. I use a lot of big words and seem smarter, but no, uh-uh. That is just me hearing other people, you know, say big words, um, getting a not an understandment, understandment, but like an understandment on where to place them in sentences to make it seem as though I am smart, but I don't know the actual definition of stuff like catalyst. But um, as I was saying, I don't know what is going to be like the pin drop, um, but whatever it is, I am petrified because this chapter poses a big threat, which is if Hisashi wanted to, he could get custody of Izuku back. It is very unlikely that he will. I don't think he's going to want to. I'm surprised he hasn't just signed his rights off. But considering the fact that he's threatening them, there's something Izuku has that Asashi wants. Or there's, there's a reason. There's something there. There is something there. And I don't know what it is. And it has to do with Izuku. Right? Obviously. Duh. Um, which, whatever it is, we're going to find out soon. Because we only have... Four more chapters. Four more chapters. Oh my god, I'm so sad. Okay, the next chapter is called Can I Sleep Now? 
But before um, I end this video and these notes, I want to talk about how Izuku sees Hisashi and um, Shota talking to each other and, and being lovey-dovey. In the sense of not like lovey-dovey, like, you know, with the typical like, oh, you're so... You, no. In the sense of this is what love looks like, right? People think, oh, love is, you know, romantic picnic dates or getting flowers to your significant other or, you know, big extravagant date. No, it's the main Dane stuff as well. Like, don't get me wrong, that is love. But it's also the main Dane stuff. The stuff like simple small stuff like Aizawa going and make sh making sure that he's in the line of sight of Hisashi when talking to him. And even though he's talking, he's also signing when he knows that Hisashi doesn't have his hearing aid on, right? Which is basic human decency, but you know, we live in a society. Um, or, you know, Hisashi actively going out of his way to make sure that his tone, and not his tone, but his, um, what's it called? His volume is low, right? Small stuff. And I'm pretty sure they do a bunch of other stuff that is small, minuscule, but it adds up. And honestly, it's just, ugh, I want a love like that, honestly. Like, I, I need myself a love like that. I don't want extravagant gates, dates. I want a simple, hey, how are you doing? You know, you told me about that one thingy. Like, can you, you know, whatever, like, let's discuss that. Or simple, like, oh, hey, I, you know, saw this and it reminded me of you. And then, you know, sends me a picture of like, I don't know, freaking Izuku. Uh, and an, an, I don't know, an Izuku shirt. Something like that, you know, like small little soft, soft, subtle, mundane stuff like that. Or even as mundane as having a conversation with them and feeling like it is the easiest thing to do in the world, you know? Um, or just talking, you know, just ugh, mundane stuff. Sorry, I'm a hopeless romantic, if you couldn't tell. I am so hopelessly romantic. Like, it is, it is, it is, it is, I'm so hopeless. I am so, it is... It is beyond me at this point, you know? I can make almost anything romantic, almost anything. I can't make everything romantic, but I can make almost everything romantic in some way, shape, or form. I mean, I think vampires are romantic in a sense, specifically the relationship between a vampire and a human or a vampire or someone who give the vampire blood. The simple act of being able to nurture the other person's life is such a strong, potent form of love, and I love it so much. But enough about love. I know very much about love. God fucking damn it, angel numbers. I'm talking about love and angel Oh my god, I hate angel numbers. I don't, I don't. I'm hearing your signs, spirit guides, things upon, beyond my earth. Please shut up for a second, I'm trying to record. But as I was saying, as always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.